Good morning and welcome to St. Edward's Episcopal Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Uh, we're excited to be able to bring to you another online version of our services this morning. Uh, we're also excited to have uh, any guests that might be with us. Uh, we're looking forward to the day that uh, you can join us in person and we can all get to know each other a little better over some coffee and donuts. If you are visiting, please go to our website at uh, www.stedwardsonline.org and fill out the uh, visitor card. Just leave us a note of who you are and uh, what brought you to uh, St. Edward's this morning. And uh, if you'd like to know more about the church, leave us uh, some contact information and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. Not a whole lot of announcements this morning. I do want to remind you that uh, our book club is starting up August 1st. Those will be on Tuesday evenings. Uh, information for that is in the e-blast that comes out on Friday. So if you're uh, getting emails from the church, check that e-blast. A lot of information about there, what's going on and who to contact. And uh, the book for this month will be uh, Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. So we're looking for a, a good uh, book club this month coming up. So please do join us for that. Uh, please continue to give your money uh, and your uh, uh, treats to the Lawrenceville Co-op. You can drop those by the church uh, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 4. Uh, Lisa in the office will be glad to uh, show you where to put those. And we're still collecting Gatorade for the Lawrenceville Fire Department, so please bring that too while you're out shopping. Throw some Gatorade in your uh, bucket and uh, bring it by the church. Uh, please continue to check on your family and friends, and if anybody is in need of any help with anything, please do contact us, 770-963-6128, and uh, we'll be glad to uh, do what we can to help them out. Y'all have a beautiful Sunday, and as always, go for it forth and spread the good news. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom now and forever. Amen. Together. Almighty God. To you, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the visitation of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for the Parish. Together. Our loving and heavenly Father. Please pour down your Holy Spirit upon this parish and grant us a new vision of your glory, a new experience of your power, a new faithfulness to your word, 
a new consecration to your service, so that through our renewed witness, your holy name may be glorified in the kingdom of the past. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and His compassion is over all His works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear Him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love Him, but He destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured the sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then, he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve basket full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Doubtless you've heard this expression once or twice before. There is no such thing as a free lunch. The expression is meant to say that there is a cost associated with every choice we make and every decision we make. That nothing comes free. There is no such thing as a free lunch. But perhaps somebody forgot to send the memo to the prophet Isaiah. <laughs> because in this first morning's first reading, Isaiah makes a rather outlandish proposal. You see, this morning's lesson was addressed to the Israelite elite who were forcibly removed from their homes and deported to Babylon during the great conquest of Jerusalem in the year 597 BC under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. Life in captivity was hard. It was harsh. And unmoored from their homeland and the temple, they had forgotten God's promise to bless them and they have succumbed to the empire economy. These children of God were longing for a return to their homeland to pick up the pieces of their lives and return to the way things used to be before the Babylonian conquest. Filled with despair and hopelessness, 
they had resigned themselves to adapting to the social and economic system of the Babylonian Empire. God's chosen people had forgotten that though they lived in the world of empire domination, they were not of that world. Despondent and hopeless, they had yielded to the Babylonian way of life, an unjust and oppressive system in which resources were spent on consumer goods that had no sustaining value. A dog-eat-dog -dog world where everything comes at a great cost. But perhaps Isaiah actually did get the memo. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And that is why he offered them an alternative reality. A reality alternative to the empire reality. A new reality which reminded them of who they were and whose they were. You see, Isaiah offered them a choice between the world of the empire, empire economy, and that of a generous and self-giving God, God's economy. A God whose covenant is grounded in and founded on an everlasting love for them. Indeed, a God of abundance who freely gives life-nourishing and soul-saving food and drink that lasts and it's all free. Why do you spend your money on food that does not nourish and your efforts on work that does not fulfill, says the prophet? Remember who you are and whose you are. Come, buy life-giving food, life-giving bread and milk and wine that nourishes with no string, strings attached. And you don't have money? Not a problem. It's all free. Your relentless pursuit of dead-end projects that do not satisfy but only leads to fatigue, despair, and utter disappointment stops today. Enough of your wandering in a strange land on which you cannot sing the Lord's song. Come back home. My friends, this alternative way of life, which stands in stark contrast to the ways of the world, is possible because of God's fidelity to the covenant which God made with God's people to bless them, that it may be a blessing to the nations. To bless them, that is, that it may be a blessing to others. Isaiah's poem is a wake-up call to resist the temptation to give in to the world of the empire and claim a new life in God's abundant economy. God, after all, is a faithful God who is able to make a way out of no way. There's a story about Millard Fuller, the founder of Habitat for Humanity. The story is that when a group of faithful Christians in America's Georgia got together to plan their first build, they became quickly overwhelmed that they did not have enough capital in the bank to break ground. The financial experts told them that they would need at least $6,000 in the bank, but they only had 3000 on hand. They seemed to have come to a dead end. No way forward for them. When the situation was brought to Millard, Millard's attention, his response was, and I quote, Yes, of course, it will be reckless and irresponsible for you to start building without having one dollar in the bank, end quote. And after the group let out a nervous laughter, Fuller went on to explain that his ministry, his ministry model, is founded upon the model of Jesus. In other words, rather than begin with the world's economy, he chose Jesus' Jesus's economy, where you only need a little for God to do wonders for the sake of others. Millar said, here it is. You take what you have 
one dollar and you give thanks for it and then give it to the Lord to bless it, then step out on faith, end quote. A wise theologian once wrote, and I quote, Divine creativity is limited only by our capacity to accept it, to trust it, and to be willing instruments of its unfolding. Such is the heart and soul of faith, end quote. Perhaps the disciples of Jesus in today's gospel reading could have used a page out of Fuller's playbook. We learned that Jesus had just been informed that his cousin and forerunner, John the Baptist, had been murdered by Herod Antipas. So he withdrew by boat to a deserted place, perhaps to mourn for his cousin. Yet undaunted by the quick departure of Jesus, the crowds followed him on foot. And when Jesus came ashore and saw them, we are told he was filled with compassion. Not feeling sorry for them, but placing himself, himself in their shoes. That is, after all, what the word compassion means, to suffer with. And as is always the case, Jesus' compassion led to action. Jesus, we are told, healed those who were sick among them, and then asked his disciples to give them something to eat. Operating with the mindset of the empire economy, which says that there is never enough to care for the needs of the poor, the disciples failed their faith test. They failed to trust that whatever they had, no matter how small, has the potential when placed in God's hands to be multiplied and to flourish beyond any human imagination or limit. What did Millard Fuller say? You take what you have and you give thanks for it and then give it to the Lord to bless it then step out on faith. With their worldly mindset, the disciples of Jesus thought that whatever they had was inconsequential in the face of the unfathomable need at hand. Yet Jesus simply asked them to bring it. Bring me your meager resources. Yes, bring your meager resources to the Lord of abundance. Then step aside and watch what God can do with it. My friends, we have a God who is dependable, faithful, and trustworthy. This God has endowed us with all the resources we ever need to transform this world from the mindset of scarcity to one of abundance. For that is how expansive God's love for the world is. God takes our meager resources and transforms them into an abundance for the people. Now, I have a whole new appreciation for the saying, the gifts of God for the people of God. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Now you tell that to the 5,000 plus who were fed on the hillside in Galilee. Perhaps Isaiah, after all, was up to something radical. Because, you see, in God's economy, there is such a thing as a free lunch. Now I invite you to profess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God and the Father, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, be God of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and has made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Out of your abundance, O God, you bless us and feed us. Have compassion upon the multitudes who need your care and touch all for whom we pray with the abundance of your grace. Your church, O gracious God, is the Eucharistic community of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us the presence of your Spirit as we take, bless, break and give our lives to your purpose. You are loving to everyone and your compassion is over all your works. You call nations that do not know you and they shall run to you, O Holy One. Visit the leaders of the nations that they may uphold all who fall and lift up those who are bowed down, sharing your divine graciousness and compassion with all humanity. You are loving to everyone, and your compassion is over all your works. Listen to our prayers for the world, that your abundance may fill all who live with scarcity, and your presence may bless all threatened people. You are loving to everyone, and your compassion is over all your works. Touch our sorrows and the unceasing anguish of our hearts as we bring our prayers to you. Let your generosity bless this community, O loving one, that all who are ill may be healed, the hungry fed, and those needing fellowship, funds, steadfast hospitality, and care among us. We pray especially for Vivian, Andrea, Gerardo, Will, Caroline, Alice, Sarah, Lillian, Mitch, Johnny, Hannah, Craig, Bruce, Laurie, David, Jason, Arthur, John, Marilyn, Kay, Julie, Kathy, Julia, Fika, Choco, Jasmine, Navar, Blandy, Melinda, Rosemary, Lee, Patricia, Graciela, Vanya, Janet, Lindy, Shandy, Mary, Rick, Leanne, Jen, Leon, Alice, Grace, Matthew, Noah, Donovan, Monica, Brianna, Cindy, Carla, and Gabriella. We also pray for the victims of COVID-19, their families, all who minister to others, and those that serve our communities. With faith, we remember those who have died and those who have died of the COVID virus and at the hands of racism, violence, and injustice. With grateful hearts, we bring you our thanks, especially for the birthdays of Lexi Morua, Priscilla Trescott, Fabio Pachero, 
Jay Franks, Kobe Wan, Eileen Brackton, Nathan Masila, Manuel Hogan, and those who celebrate anniversaries of marriage. You are loving to everyone, and your compassion is over all your works. Visit us in our fear and fill us with abundance of your grace, O God, that all people may feel and know the goodness of your presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Birthday blessings. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Jayla Ferris, Priscilla Trescott, Fabio Pachero, Elaine Brighton, Nathan Mancilla, Manuel Olguin, Jay Franks, Olga Isla Santiago, Colby Walk, Edward Cole, Ian Manguto, Eric Westpelling, Henry Gaba, Chris Rivers, Clayton Simmons, Grace Pavi, Clayton Duffy, Madison Ray, Gary Daniels, Marbu Neal, Catherine Anaya, Skip Portier, Diane Van Slyke, Elizabeth Gallagher, Chuck Jones, Kathy Mormon, Megan Gallagher, Gladys Terpe, Jamie Salisbury, Brianna Wigham, Bill Og, Abel Flores, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Anniversary blessings. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon your children, Charles and Christine Higgins, Linda and Eugenia Nuosu, Buck and Cindy Mosley, Bob Gadland 
and Nicole Harrison, and Kevin and Denise Lee. May they so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a heaven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray with the same words that Jesus taught us. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the physical presence of our community, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and the life to come. Amen. God is gracious and generous, loving to everyone, and his compassion is for all. Christ, the two bread from heaven, is the bountiful gift of divine love, which alone can feel your hunger. The Spirit is near in your moment of need and can satisfy all your needs. And the blessing of our abundant God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and dwell with you now and forever. Amen. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you uh, to join us for the Zoom Coffee Hour and Fellowship.